It wasn't too long ago that Nebraska marched into Piscataway as a one-score favorite to secure their third win of the season, and the significance of that game back then felt just as important as this one does now. Like this team in their pursuit for a Big Ten West championship, Mickey Joseph controls his own destiny, but just because Rutgers been a doormat lately doesn't mean they will be on Friday. The last two times they beat Big Ten teams at home, Rutgers was rocking the same all-black unis they're pulling out for this one, so if history tells us anything, it's that a blackout's a sign and upsets just waiting to happen. But Nebraska's 4-0 against these guys since they joined the Big Ten, and there are plenty of reasons to believe that that winning streak's gonna continue. So today, I'm giving you a preview and a prediction for this Friday night showdown, and we'll talk about what it'll take for each of these teams to make it out with a win. But what's up guys, I'm Connor Hayden and this is Corn Crazed. If you're a fan of Nebraska or the Big Ten, make sure you hit the subscribe button below so you don't miss my live stream preview or post game shows. And if you're picking Nebraska to beat Rutgers this week, smash the like button now and help us get to 1,000. But now, let's get into it. Before we jump into the preview, I want to talk about some of the comments I've been seeing about Mickey deserving the head coaching position if he wins a couple more games. One thing about fans, not just Nebraska, but college football fans in general, is that they're very reactionary to any big moment, which is usually a game, commitment, coaching hire, whatever. And I'd say it's justified to some degree because those big moments are defining in a season with only 12 games. But the problem is that even though there are only 12, there's a lot of growth or regression that can happen over the course of that three-month period, and nothing's absolute until the season's over. That's the beauty of college football. You never know what you're going to get. After the first three weeks with a loss to a really bad Northwestern team, an embarrassing finish to Georgia Southern, and then the Oklahoma meltdown, the general consensus among Nebraska fans was that Nebraska might win one, maybe two more games this year if they're lucky. And then the Indiana game happened, and all of a sudden, half the fan base is back on board to believing this team has a chance to win for the next seven. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, because there are multiple factors leading us to believe that Nebraska's not in as bad of a spot as they were two weeks ago. But the comments in favor of Mickey are now getting to be a little too optimistic because of this one game. I'm not saying Mickey isn't awesome or that what he's done so far with this team isn't amazing. But you know I try to be as realistic as possible on this channel, so I want to put the coaching situation into perspective so we aren't acting like the casual college football fans who overreact to every little thing and then get too excited just to be let down later. Nebraska's win total for this year was set to 7.5 based on the new hires and the new additions to the roster, so maybe that goal needs to be adjusted slightly since the previous staff cost us two games early on, but this team should still finish the regular season with five wins. That's the minimum. If Mickey and Bill Bush get the team to five total, and they've got to two as of today, they've done their job that they were paid to do. Does that mean they're magicians and deserve to be the next head coach and defensive coordinator? I don't think so. They were supposed to beat Indiana by six points, and they beat them by 14. They're supposed to beat Rutgers by three, and if they do, all power to them, and let's keep this thing rolling. But it's going to be hard for me to back these Mickey for head coach comments until he beats somebody he's not supposed to. Say Nebraska takes care of Rutgers this week. Odds are, when they go to Purdue, they're going to be a slight underdog. But even if they were the favorite, if Mickey and Bill Bush can outcoach Jeff Brom on the road at night, after already beating Indiana and Rutgers to get Nebraska to its third Big Ten win in a row since I don't know when, then I'm going to be right there with you hoping Mickey gets a serious look to take over as head coach for next year. But for now, I'm just appreciating their attention to detail and all of their efforts to try and clean up the little things that have killed this team for the past five years. The last time Nebraska won a road game was in this same stadium at night when they came back to win 28-21 after being down seven at the half. But that was the COVID year. There were no fans, no blackout, no special jersey. This was a 3-5 and five Rutgers team breaking in Greg Schiano in his first year as the head coach. Friday night's got a different vibe to it. Rutgers is 3-2, and two, the game's at night, and this is the closest thing they're going to get to a primetime slot this whole year. The crowd's going to be in all black. Shiano knows this is the type of win that'll keep him on track for a bowl game. And more importantly, it'll give him a huge boost in recruiting. 
if there was ever a time for them to break out the special playbook and switch some things up to throw off this newly reworked staff, Friday night's it. The eye test tells us that Indiana was a tougher opponent than Rutgers will be, but the stats tell a different story. Nebraska and IU both ranked near the bottom nationally with the 124th and the 107th ranked total defenses. Rutgers, on the other hand, comes in at number 18 nationally, and although they gave up 49 to a top three Ohio State team, they only gave up 13 and a half points a game to everybody else. What's more impressive is that their D has already forced eight turnovers in just five games, and the lone team making it out with giving up at least one was Iowa. Their run D is slightly stronger since teams are only averaging 95 yards a game on the ground, but the most important note I found that I know Whipple can't wait to take advantage of is that Rutgers has the worst red zone defense in the country. Out of 11 tries in the red zone, they've given up 10 touchdowns and only held the offense to a field goal once. For a Nebraska team whose biggest issue in recent memory has been closing out drives and putting up points consistently, this is the game where I can confidently say they're going to get back on track. Bill Bush inherited the third worst defensive unit in the country after the OU game, but last week the tackling improved, the front seven played as physical as we saw them last season, and they held a good, not great, Indiana offense to only 14 points. It wasn't enough to move the needle statistically since they're still near the bottom of the ratings, but the aggressiveness from the edge rushers and the improvements by Ty Robinson should really hurt their O-line, who's already given up nine sacks this year. This week's matchup is about as good as you can ask for with the stronger front line since Rutgers has such a weak passing game and their running backs haven't been much better. And that leads us to the Rutgers offense. And Part of the reason their passing game is ranked 13th in the Big Ten is because they haven't had any consistent quarterback play. Gavin Wimsatt was the guy to start the year, but he only completed 42% of his passes and he ended up throwing two picks, so Evan Simon got his chance. Against Iowa, he was 28-49 of for 300 yards and a touchdown, but outside of that one game, and I guess against Wagner, he hasn't thrown for more than 100 yards. They do like to switch it up with run calls though because they've had at least 12 different guys carry the ball this year and last week five different players had more than three touches. So as long as Bill Bush sticks to running man, the linebackers don't miss any easy tackles and the front four gets a decent push against their suspect line, Rutgers is going to struggle to drive the ball downfield. The key to this game, and actually I guess we can say every game from here on out, is Mark Whipple's offense. Nebraska ranks 47th nationally, and they've been as effective with the run as they have with the pass. Anthony Grant and Trey Palmer lit it up on the stat sheets these first few weeks, and the most impressive number I saw was that Anthony Grant's averaging 141 yards a game, but that doesn't include Oklahoma since they benched him after the first quarter just to make sure he didn't get injured. Iowa's running backs averaged over 4 yards a carry. Ohio State averaged over 7 the number 18 Rutgers D earned that ranking by dominating Boston College, Wagner, and Temple. But any competent offense can clearly take advantage of what's been a very average D once they play against Big Ten teams. The biggest test Saturday is going to be to see how good Casey and anyone else who handles the ball is with security. Because Shiano knows if they're going to have a chance to keep this close, turnovers and good field position are the way it's going to happen. Let's talk about the betting line for this game because I think Nebraska is being undervalued here. But before we do, I want to make sure that if you do want to bet this game or any others this weekend, you have the chance to. So the sponsor for today's video is Brothrow, which is the best site I've used to place bets on games because they don't require a deposit, there are no minimums or withdrawal requirements, and most importantly, you don't pay the VIG since it's not a sports book. Our Corn Craze community on the site already has almost 90 members making predictions and placing bets for this weekend. So if you live in any U.S. state, yes, I said any state, and you want to join us there to get in on the action without paying any fees, without linking a bank account, and betting anywhere from $1 to $100 or more, just click the link in the bio below or head to brothrow.com slash GBR and you can start placing bets with our community and other users on the site now. The line for this game opened as a pick -em, but it's already moved to Nebraska minus three, and I bet it goes as high as minus four before game time. Beating Indiana only helped the movement, but the night game environment on the road is keeping this spread below a touchdown, and to be honest, I think that's ridiculous. 
Shiano's 16 and 8 all time in night games at Rutgers, but since he came back as head coach in 2020, his record at home at night is only 1 and 3. And to be fair, the last time Rutgers beat a Big Ten team at home was at night, and they had the all black jerseys on, but that was all the way back in 2017 against Maryland. You heard that correctly. They have not beaten a Big Ten team at home in almost five years. On top of that, Shiano's record against teams in the West is just 2-4, and four, and since Nebraska joined the Big Ten, they have never lost a game at home or on the road against Rutgers. So if you take away Temple and Wagner, which are clearly inferior teams who have no business playing anybody in the Big Ten, Rutger has only played one good game all year against a decent Boston College team. The only question is, do you trust Nebraska to finish strong like they did last week, or is this staff still in the business of giving games away? And if you think Nebraska can score at least 35 again this week, the over might be a good play too, since it's pretty low at only 49. Now for my prediction. Nebraska's defense only missed six tackles last week. They picked Basilak off once, and they had a huge play on special teams for a TD. And that's the type of play we've been waiting to see this year, and it all ended up coming together on one night. The offensive line played like they wanted to be there. Anthony Grant hasn't shown any sign that he's going to let up, and Casey responded great to tough coaching from Mark Whipple on national TV. Oh, and the receivers continue to make big plays and move the ball downfield. The only way things go left is if Casey's nagging issues turn out to be worse than we think they are, or if the defense goes back to their old ways. But with Shenander long gone, I think we already know what direction things are going there. So give me Nebraska to win 33-20 to in what should be a pretty physical game from both teams, since they're both in position to make a run for a bowl game, and for Nebraska, maybe even more. But I want to know what you think, so let me know in the comments below. Is Rutgers coming into this game pissed off looking for revenge, or are they still trying to recover from the beatdowns against Iowa and Ohio State? Has Nebraska's defense finally found their balls, or are they going to climb back into their shell and let Rutgers score 45 on Friday? Is Casey ready to show us something different after he got chewed out for taking sacks, or is he just meant to be an average college quarterback? I honestly believe Casey's barely scratching the surface for what he can achieve in this offense, but he's got to find that dog deep down, and maybe he's got to watch some 9 a.m. highlights at Kansas State to see how effective the QB scramble can be to extend the play. I got to go get ready for our live call-in show coming up soon, so until next time, thank you for being here, and I'll see you in the next one. Go Big Red.